to Now or Never. Steve Cavino, What's Rich up, Davis, man? Charlie Arnold's here. Hello. And O'Shea Jackson Jr. Yo. is in the house. Thank man. You. Thank you. Call me with us all. Hey, yo, bro. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Good to see you for sure. Thank now, you. I want to get right into this because there's NFL stuff to talk about. There's NBA stuff to talk about. But you, my friend, made a wish list that you put out on your social yeah. media. Yeah. Number eight got me heartbroken. We're yeah. gonna get to all the ones that have gone wrong. I got you heartbroken, yeah, okay? I'm all right, I'm all right. I'm <laughs> but let's start with the Lakers winning the NBA title. How do you feel yeah. about this prediction for 2020 on your wish list? Feeling pretty excited about it. I can't wait until I get my parade in Figueroa and I get to see LeBron and AD have their, their champion shirts that I will buy immediately. Now, there's guys in the newsroom that are Clippers oh. fans that say, how can you be that excited when you can't even beat the other L.A. team? <laughs> this is a good point. This is, this is from the Clippers <laughs> who have lost twice to the Rockets, Jazz, and got stomped out by the Grizzlies at home. I'm fine. Well, listen, man, this is now or never. I don't want you to hold back, because just before you were saying Clippers suck, Clippers yeah. suck, Clippers suck, Clippers, Clippers suck. Clippers suck. <laughs> so, yo, yo, my feel mantra. free. Yeah, it's my mantra. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I hope they go to Vancouver. <laughs> Uh, Seattle's dope, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, it, just, just get them up out of here. It, 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 it's so telling that Staples Center has been here for 20 years. There's been 10 championships. Not one of them has been y'all. And as soon as you get good, you want to leave her. Is it, is it embarrassing that when the Clippers play home games, they have to cover the Lakers stuff with, with banners and blankets? That's another thing. You guys, <laughs> you guys hired the Celtics coach. Let the Celtics coach come down here and hype y'all up to cover the, the Laker banners and the Sparks banners. You defaced Magic Johnson's statue. Yeah. Who he's, he's done more for L.A. than any Clipper ever. And it, it's just disrespect. They're ungrateful. By the way, on a but side note. But the Lakers note, can't seem to beat them in the arena that they share. You see, yeah. Clippers worry about the regular season. Lakers oh, worry okay. about the playoffs. Oh, okay. yeah, when it counts, right, when it matters. Right. Yeah. Do you use your O'Shea Jackson Jr. perks when you're at the game? What sort of respect do you get from the players? When they see you, you're recognizable. So yeah. do they point you out with sort of... The relationship do you have? The, the, Lake, the Lakers who, who watch these shows yeah. and, and hear my voice know that I rep them the toughest. Yeah. Um, any opposing player that I meet outside in the outside world, like my man James Harden, I met James Harden, I let him know, man, get you some Laker colors in your life, bro. <laughs> it, do, it doesn't matter. I ride for my team, LAL, all day. Ride or die. We love that. Okay, mm. we got to talk about another thing on your wish list. That was the word millions. Millions. Now you're talking about millions for maybe uh, a man called Anthony Davis because you do know... He just turned down that four-year, $146 million extension. So what's you thinking here? I mean, we do have the man's bird rights, and if he waits till the summer, he gets $200 million. Uh, okay. I mean, it's simple okay. math. Right, it's right. simple math. It's strategic. Yeah, I mean, just, just, <laughs> just pay that man. You know, I, I, by seeing him reject that, letting me know that we have his bird rights and that we we can give him 200 during the summer, basically told me he's staying. So I'm, no you know, worries. <laughs> I'm oh. chilling. <laughs> what were you talking about, though, when you said millions? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to need that O'Shea Jackson Jr. bank account oh, okay. to, to stack up a little bit more. You know, I'm a I'm a strong, I'm a I'm my own two feet type guy. So I'm, I'm a strong thousand there right now. Okay. Ooh, and I need you. I need to get to the millions. You got to start somewhere. Oh, yeah. I'm, Not and I'm, bad. I'm going hard in 2020. <laughs> we got some things lined up, some projects lined up that should help you boy get that down. Nice, nice. Well, I wish you the best. Wait, but, you know, you know people. Do you have inside scoop that he's staying? I mean, I'm not about to give out my secrets, but I know I'm going to let y'all know, know I'm not worried. Yeah, he, learned some, no... he learned some secrets at a Taco Tuesday he had with uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, LeBron. By the way, if, if you were to host the Taco Tuesday with yeah. the Lakers, would that make a guy like you nervous? If you're like, yo, if they took you up and you said, come over my place for a Taco Tuesday. I mean, first of all, it would be... <laughs> Dream come true. You know, anything <laughs> right. that the Laker organization need from your boy, just holler at me. Shout out to Jeannie. Shout out to Jeannie. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm taking on Mamba mentality. You got to take on any challenge. How are your cooking skills? Pretty whack. Throw some good <laughs> 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 okay. He's honest. But I got to Instapot, and Instapot makes sure everything's right. <laughs> no, you're, you're, <laughs> now, you're, you're such a fan, but how do you feel about Rondo and Kuzma? Do you want them out? Are they out? Are What's there distractions yeah. at play here? Dude, Kyle, first of all, we need to give Kyle Kuzma a break. The man was injured in the beginning of the year. Let him get fully healthy. Uh, also, last year we were talking about him being better than Jason Tatum. Give the man time. And uh, this entire team just got blended together in, in one season. There's only five guys from last year. There's a number of chemistry things that we need to work out that the teams who have beaten us have had greater chemistry. They've been together longer. So we need to just give that time. And Rondo, 
Rondo's only ring is against the Lakers, so I think it's a curse somewhere. Something Boston is is causing him to mess up. <laughs> but I, I, I hope the best for the man. I would love for him to be the first player to have a championship with with the Celtics and the Lakers. You know, our buddy Sedano tweeted out that yeah. uh, Rondo, Rondo is a detriment to this oh. team. And I saw you respond. Yeah, because George is right. <laughs> I love Rondo, man, but God, I just need you to just be better. Just, just, just step up. You know, I, I, I love our team. I, I love the, the camaraderie that I see. You know, when I, when I see these guys together, and I don't want to break that up. You know, I feel like this is something special. And, and I mean, we're first in the West. Are we really talking about trading people? Right. Like we're first in the West. Yeah. Everybody just needs to. Get it together. Slow People down. like to get worked up, though. It's of what course. they do. It's because of that NBA 2K. Everybody <laughs> thinks they're a GM all of a sudden. But no, we need to trade him now. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Now, let's uh, let's turn to the NFL for a second. I saw uh, your prediction yeah. for the Super Bowl. This is on yeah. the wish list. This is on, on your list. 2020 wish list. Yes, number you, eight. you put down there Ravens oh. Saints. Yes. Now, I'm a Niners fan. After you saw what happened to the Saints this weekend, yeah. is Kirk Cousins... Diggs, are these guys, like are that. they are feeling, are they coming together at the right time? It's definitely one of those sneaky teams, man. And, uh, you know, I, I was cheering for the Saints because my cousin is Michael Thomas. And I really thought this was going to be it. Not you know, I, I really felt like this was going to be their year. But now, honestly, uh, my family is a, a number of different teams. And my brother, my little brother's favorite team is the Ravens. My mom's favorite team is the Seahawks. Wait, your cousin, Michael Thomas? You got the hands? Huh? Uh, oh! oh! I didn't know what was going on. Hey, that's so cool. That I didn't know you, what got was going the, on. you got the, you got the, the, the hands on the family. Right, Reflexes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, so I just cool, chanced though. hitting you in the face. I apologize. No, no, it's all right. Hey, listen, it's because you, you threw it here. I know. I got to protect the money. The money maker. maker. Yeah, yeah, dude. Now, what, what do you think uh, What do you think the Super Bowl looks like in the AFC? Do you think Lamar Jackson, this is the year for him or what? Uh, yeah, you know, in the beginning, I definitely was uh, thinking it was going to be that Mahomes train. But mm -hmm. Lamar is, they're hot right now yeah. on both sides of the ball. And it, it's, it's just, whenever Baltimore gets on these runs, yeah. they always succeed. Well, how it's are just, your Rams, though? I, like, I was just like, I was smiling. Did you not cheer hard enough? Was, uh, no, look, all right. <laughs> the Patriots and Belichick, Be Belichick. Oh, they, they, uh, we heard he, that. It, it, he, he gave the, the, the league a blueprint when you're only making us score three points. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we can't get Cooper Cup the ball, but the Rams, the whole organization has had a complete turnaround from the Jeff Fisher days. Right now, we just need to regroup and adjust. You know, they got the scouting report on us. It happens to all teams, and we need to adjust. I have all the faith in the world in Sean McVay, and, uh, yeah, we, we need to get it done. Todd Gurley? a month ago is sitting where you're sitting now. Mm. He's a great guy. I really, mm. uh, I, I think he still has gas left in the tank. I don't know what's going, I don't know, people think he's done. I don't think he's done. Yeah, I think it was a, uh, a mixture last year of, you know, kind of, I think we were we were feeling that we were going to get into the playoffs a little too early. You know, feeling mm -hmm. like, all right, when we get there, we'll, we'll let Todd go off. Yeah. And, like, kind of babying him a little bit to kind of, like, rest mm -hmm. him. And I don't think we needed to do that. Todd Gurley is a warrior. And, uh, you know, if, if, if he felt like he couldn't be on the field, I don't think he would. All right, let's talk about the Rooney rule real quick because a lot of coaches were hired this week. Yeah. And it got Stephen A., Really heated, fired really up. triggered. Yeah, fired up. Put it this way. A bunch of white guys were hired. Stephen A. wasn't having it. Yeah. And if you missed it, uh, let's take a listen. There is a Rooney rule in place. And still, this kind of stuff is happening. We got a problem. This is some BS. Ain't no way around this. We moving in a reverse direction. We moving in a reverse direction. Black men are not being treated fairly. In the National Football League. Somebody got to say it. Somebody got to say it. You got to be kidding me. When, when the stuff that has happened over the last year, for this stuff to go on and we just going to sit up here and have a sports conversation. No, I ain't having no damn sports conversation at this particular moment. Something wrong. Now, the National Football League or somebody else, we got to change this Rudy rule. is bogus, clearly, because it's being bypassed. The original intent, what it was intended to produce, is being circumvented. And black men in the National Football League are being ostracized from key positions in the National Football League. Somebody needs to say it. The NFL, league owners, the world of sports, sports talk television, sports radio, y'all are going to be hearing from me. Something got to be done. Something got to be done.
Now, O'Shea, I see you on first take with yeah. Stephen A. talking all this. When you see him going crazy like that, what's the first thing you start thinking? Uh, you got to start looking at what he, you know, Stephen A. doesn't just get passionate about anything. Yeah. You know, yeah. when he goes off like that, it's usually some real heat behind it. And I remember when, you know, when there were head coaching jobs that were available, you would kind of see teams put out a list of people that they're interested in, and he's coming in this week to talk to the team. And nowadays, it just seems like coaches are hired before the other one is fired. And I know, uh, I know it doesn't feel good as a Giants fan when you have Saquon Barkley that they're hiring a wide receiver coach oh. to be your head coach. Right. I just don't, I don't understand the, you know, the, the logic yeah. in that. But you know, uh, it's definitely something that needs to be looked at. I know personally, I've taken pride in uh, though the black coaches have gone down the black quarterback is back in full effect oh yeah absolutely. killing the game yeah. out here I, <laughs> I love that but yeah it's definitely something that people need to look at it, it needs to be a fair interviewing process uh you can't tell an organization who to hire just because of you know whatever they're going to make their decision but as long as there's a, a fair exchange of interviews and things that people are allowed to show what they got because when you look at a, a organization like the Steelers who's trusted in Mike Tomlin right. for from great success you, you got to wonder what other teams are thinking a little bit yeah no honestly you said the, the emergence mm -hmm. of the young black quarterback in the NFL yeah. it is peculiar when you look at the bigger picture and say a, a young a league full of a, a bunch of young black guys mm. Old white coaches? Yeah. It, it's they're, that they're, right? it, right, exactly. and, and as far as also camaraderie and chemistry and, mm. and and leadership, I don't know. I just it does seem a little off. Something's just yeah, just a tad off. And you know, like I said, I used to know that like, all right, he's trying for this job, he's trying for this job, and it, it just feels like decisions are made a week after the firing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it, you know, right. that's, I don't know any interview process that quick. Yeah, it was a pre well, I, I think pre you made decision. a good point. There needs mm. to be a fair process. Yeah. Bottom line, there needs to be a fair process. If that's being, if that's happening, great news. If not, yeah. then we need to address the issue. But yeah. speaking of social issues, mm -hmm. you are well aware of some of the social issues that exist in the world. Your movie you're starring in, yeah. Just Mercy. Transition over here. Look, yeah. I don't like to brag. Wow. Charlie's nice out here. <laughs> I, right? I, I am nice. <laughs> but look, look, it's super exciting. It hits yeah. theaters everywhere this Friday. In fact, your man, Kobe Bryant, hosted a special screening this week in LA. Yeah. A community screening. Yeah for the movie, so mm. that's very exciting. But talk to us about that movie, Just Mercy. I actually read the book, finished it a few weeks ago, started mm. watching the movie, I am blown away. Thank you, it's a, uh, yeah, it's it's a beautiful story of, of Brian Stevenson and, and him founding the, the EJI, the Equality Justice Initiative. And it is, uh, it, it, it's an amazing story. It's, it, it's something that I'm, I'm proud to be a part of. I was low key, upset with myself that I wasn't aware of Brian's work before I read the script. And it's something that people need to be aware of. And that's our job as actors to, you know, to bring issues like this to the screen. It's, it's sometimes it's better, people get it if they see it. You and, know, we deal in the dude, business of vision. We're seeing it and you're killing it. Michael B. Jordan, yeah. Jamie uh, Foxx. Brie and Larson. What a cast. Yeah. Shout to Brie. Oh, it's crazy. And uh, in this scene, you're with Jamie Foxx, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's take a look. John D, you there? What's up, Herb? Ready? Unavailable at the moment. <laughs> Where you at? Buckingham Palace. I'm having tea with the queen. <laughs> hey, John, Johnny D, what you think of the lawyer? I think he a kid. Making all these promises he ain't gonna be able to keep. I, I thought he was nice. Nice? What the hell you want a nice lawyer for? Look at Johnny D. Nice as a puppy, yet he in here with us. Well, I know you thought about me like that, Ray. For an old man on the road, yeah, all right. Just wow. mercy. And you read the book, but I, you can't say, you can't come back and say the book was better. No, oh, no. Yeah. I know, this, you know who I, says that? Nerds. Like, hey, <laughs> look, I know, I wasn't all, but I read the book a few weeks. The but book's look, better. Get out of here. Here's one thing I will say. I am very confident that the movie will be just as effective as the book, which a lot yeah. of movie book tandems can't say. Right. Yeah. It, I mean, this is going to be a hard hitter. Yeah, this one, uh, is, I always say uh, when people are for first seeing it, it's a boo-hooer. Yeah, it's definitely going to choke you up a little bit, and it's it's just important. The movie is it, it, it's meant to be a spark to fuel the fire to get more Brian Stevenson's, oh, more yeah. people aware. You know, during, during times like that, 
so many people were unaware of the injustice that, that was happening. And nowadays we have social media, we have all these things that puts it right in your face. So it, it's, it's about enough people standing up and, and bringing change. All right, so I'm watching this one alone if I'm going to be crying yeah, the whole it's, time. It's a I, I, no, dude, just let the tears fall. <laughs> let them fall, Make sure it's sensitive. <laughs> oh, dude, thank, you so thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Awesome talking to you. Jackson Jr., yeah. thank you.